Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about the communication efficiency of ant colonies. We found a data set that have six separate ant colonies. We can see the orientation and the position of ants by looking at this data set. It includes 41 days of observation. The authors recorded, and pos recorded the position and orientation of all the individual ants twice per second, thus they can reconstruct spatial movements and infer all social interactions occurring over 41 days of the experiment, which means there are 41 different data for each colony. We will go through with the two colonies, which are colony 1 and colony 2. The reason that we selected those colonies is they have somewhat uh, similar characteristics. In our project, we selected concept as the communication efficiency. It an analysis uh, it analyzes how the information is changed between the nodes in the graph. We measured it with the two principles we have: global efficiency and the local efficiency. With global efficiency, we will be looking at the efficiency of distance information transfer within the real world and colony. And with the local efficiency, we will, we will be looking at the average efficiency of information transfer within an ant, ant uh, colony locally. Um, graph dataset G1 uh, and G2 descriptions. Graph dataset G1 represents the ant colony uh, ones. 41 days measurements. The graph has 55 nodes, which represents the ants, and 1100 edges, which represents the interaction between them. Graph dataset G2 represents the colony 2's 41 day measurements, and uh, it has 58 nodes and 930 edges. And in this part, you can see the adjacency matrices for both ant colony 1 and ant colony 2 on their 41 days. Um, here we visualize the overlaid uh, node degree distributions for G1 and G2. Uh, as we explained our concept and principles in the presentation part, we will be uh, briefly mentioning them in here. Our concept is the communication efficiency and uh, we used global and local efficiency principles to measure it. Uh, to illustrate how the uh, efficiency works on small graphs, we also implemented a global efficiency uh, we implemented the global efficiency and show its working principles step by step. We first generated a new random graph and then we calculated all of its path, path lengths using uh, the Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm and visualized one of the shortest paths as well as um, the shortest path lengths as a matrix. After sh calculating the shortest path lengths, we summed up all the inverse uh, path lengths and took the average uh, excluding the self pairing. As a result, we obtained the global efficiency score. Uh, we compete, compared it with uh, NetworkX's own implementation and pro it produces the same results. Um, now we can uh, dive into the mathematical principles and see how we can formalize them. First stop is the characteristic path length. We can calculate it by averaging the shortest path lengths between all the possible pairs of nodes in a graph excluding self-pairing. It works great for connected graphs, but when we are working on fragmented graphs, which means the shortest paths are infinity, then the sum fails and we cannot calculate it. It's the time where harmonic mean comes in. In harmonic mean, uh, whether the graph is fragmented or not, uh, we can calculate a value using a reciprocal shortest path from node J to node I. Our first principle global efficiency ca can be calculated using the reciprocal of harmonic mean and the local efficiency can be calculated using the inverse of the average shortest path connecting all the neighbors, neighbors of that vertex. Uh, to calculate the information uh, flow efficiency, we gener generated a two-dimensional R space where dimension 1 represents local efficiency and dimension 2 represents the global efficiency. Uh, Non-clustered graphs have paths between vertices that are globally shorter but locally longer. As a result, we expect the global efficiencies of colonies to be unique to themselves. We, are also, expect, uh, we also expect the local efficiencies uh, to differ. Uh, for simulating the uh, graphs G1 and G2, we use, the, we use the function called random reference available in network X. Function generates a random graph by swapping edges of uh, given networks. Uh, for not, the, not uh, strength uh, distribution, we plotted the anchor graph uh, G1 with 100 simulated graphs generated from G1 in an overlaid manner. Results show us that distribution of 
the simulated graphs exactly matches with the anchor graph. The same results uh, are also obtained for anchor graph G2 and simulated graphs generated from G2. Both distributions are again exactly the same across the networks. Um, in this section, we plotted the anchor graphs G1 and 2 as stars and simulated the uh, and uh, visualized the simulated graphs as dots. Uh, in this graph, um, we have the results separated uh, from each other, and in the, in this graph, uh, we have them plotted on the same graph. Um, I will discuss the results section in. Uh, on this graph and we can see that the global efficiency of anchor colonies and simulated colonies are equal uh, we are not expecting that colonies uh, global efficiency to be equal we were expecting when a colony changes global efficiency of the colony uh, should also be changed this means that colonies communication efficiency does not change on the colony scale but if you look at the individual ends which means if you look at the local efficiencies in the colonies we can see that the communication efficiency differs as we mentioned uh, when we introduced the data set we compared two different colonies uh, 41 day measurements as an addition we also wanted to uh, try how the network changes in the first uh, 10th and 25th days since they are avail available to us. If you look at the G2 colony and compare the days, we can see that the colony's communication efficiency uh, better in the first day and after the days passes, the communication efficiency decreases overall. The reason uh, this is happening is while the days passes, uh, some ants in the colony dies. The died ones actually the ones that most of the communication goes through. We can say that ones that died are hop ends for communication in the g1 colony though we can observe in the first 10 days uh first 10 days ants in the hops are dying and this greatly affects the communication efficiency but after that ones that died actually the ones that communicating less which corresponds to increase uh, in the communication efficiency Right, uh, this is all from our side. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, we can have uh, your questions. Thank you.